I've not had a whoop for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Hello and welcome to your final Loose Women of the Week. It is the countdown to the weekend and joining me for some lunchtime laughs at Sinetra Sarkar, Carol McGiffin and Nadia Sawala. Coming up, it's nature's morning wake-up call. But is there anything worse than enjoying a deep sleep and being rudely awakened by this? <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> After one cockerel caused chaos <laughs> for its neighbours in Worcester. <laughs> I was dreading that line. Uh, we are chatting about our own noisy neighbour experiences. Also, we know that there's things that can be done to ease menopause symptoms, but is preparing in your earlier years the key to menopause success? As part of our menopause manifesto, we're joined by the perimenopause doctor, Dr. Shazadi Harper. Um, also today, uh, she famously hired a hitman to kill her husband, Ian Bale, but has she taken things one step further and committed cold-blooded murder in her latest role? Inspired by the murderous board game, actress Michelle Collins is starring as Miss Scarlet in Cluedo, and she's here later on. There we go. So... The long await for Sue Gray is oh. nearly over. Are we excited? Uh, the Metropolitan Police has concluded their four-month £460,000 investigation into Partygate. Scotland Yard confirmed that the Prime Minister got only one of 126 fines for law-breaking parties at the heart of Downing Street, despite him uh, attending gatherings for which other people were fined. So half a million pounds, uh, Nadia, has this been a worthwhile exercise? Do you know what makes me so cross about this? If they had just fessed up, we, would, we wouldn't have had to pay half a million. They have cost us half a million with playing around with the truth, playing games the whole time about what they've done and what they misunderstood, and what the, the actual rule makers. I, I'm furious and I also think it's really, really important that we do keep, keep talking about this because this shows the character of the people that are running the country. I didn't care a jot about anyone else breaking the rules, but with them, I really, really minded. Why? I'm thinking, why, why was it so Because I'm thinking, I'm, I, I mean, any one of us can pluck a hundred stories, can't we, that we've heard. The little old lady who was having the cup of tea with her neighbours and the police knocked on her door at 10 o'clock at night. The people that weren't able to hug their family members, you know, when they were at funerals. People that weren't able to be at the birth of their children. I'm thinking of all those people. I didn't have any of those horrible experiences during, during the pandemic, but plenty of people did because they were rigidly sticking to the rules that they've been told were vitally important mm. to save lives. And those yeah. people, but not that lot. And those people feel like mugs now because they went along with it and they yeah. found out that actually, you could, if you were an MP, you could have done this and you could have, if you were in Downing Street, there's a different set of rules. So for me, I do think it was a waste of time. However, it's what, what was a waste of time? What, what, what was a waste of time is spending four months and half a million pounds investigating whether people did things or not that the police didn't witness mm. at the time. Problem is, that's easy for me to say in hindsight, isn't it? I can say now it was a waste of time. We had to go through those four months for them to see if there was any new information. So they have to have done that for no, us to have then said I completely, that. totally disagree with you because I think there was no point in having an investigation. They didn't investigate anybody else. They just gave them fines. What about the, the gym owner and the hairdresser yeah. who didn't close exactly. their shops because they were told to? They were fined thousands of pounds on the spot. Mm. And these fines are, I mean, they're paltry. They're just, it's pathetic. And they've spent half a million pounds trying to work out where people had photographic footage. Well, yeah, and of, of course the of fine. what actually happened. Depending so what, what it is, if it's a fixed penalty notice, whether it's 50 pounds or 100 pounds or whatever, if you're earning 140 grand a year, that's really not going to mean well, very yeah. much to you. Mm. Whereas, I mean, my daughter was first year university when it all started and you know young people 18 years of age away from home for the first time were getting fined willy-nilly yeah and yeah. there was no recourse there was no big investigation yeah. it was there you go you're having a party you know yeah. no questions answered and, and on you go well, 18 the point, the year point was being though fined for having a party i mean for god the, point was against with the mps the right the mps they did what they wanted because they knew the reality of the situation. But they made everybody else yes. behave in a different way. And that <coughs> scared everybody stupid yeah. and mm. everybody obeyed the rules. Yeah. So the investigation really needs to go into 
why did they do that? Why did they lock down yeah. people for so long? Yeah. Why did they make all those rules? You know, but here we, we need are. to know that. The investigation is now complete. You know, we've got a statement from the acting Deputy Commissioner Helen Ball from the Met Police um, and saying the information we received with regard to alleged, bre alleged breaches in Downing Street and Whitehall was sufficient to reach our criteria to begin such an investigation. It was thorough, impartial, completed as quickly as we could um, and given the amount of information that needed to be reviewed and the importance of ensuring that we had a strong evidence for each fixed penalty notice referral. So they feel that they've done their job belt and braces. It's done now. Is it now time to move on? Or are we going to lumber into, well, what is the Sue Gray report? Or do we draw a line under it? Yeah, I think, I think should, the way that... You they, think we yeah, should draw a line yeah, under it? Yeah, because I, I think we need to you get don't. back to basics, the actual basics of what happened over the last two years. Not whether they had a cake at a party or not what the MPs actually did. I don't care. I actually don't care what they did. But see, I care what they did to the country and what they did to people okay. with struggling businesses and mental health and physical health as well, what they've done to the NHS. OK, so you want to Shopping. draw a line under party gate and, and yes. look perhaps more at a public inquiry I, of the way they I, handled I, the last yeah. years. What, if, why if you not? think back to a few months ago there was nobody there was nobody that was put forward from the government to, to talk to us that there wasn't that didn't just give us the, the sue gray sue gray sue gray wait for the sue gray, gray. wait sue gray. for the sue gray they treat us like absolute idiots just wait for the sue gray point. whilst kicking the can down the road hoping they would get to this point where, where everyone goes there? oh sue gray i don't i care. mean who cares it's really important. I feel really to care. sorry. That was the point. Yeah. They wanted you no. to care about something that wasn't important. I think important. we should spare a thought for Sue Gray. Everybody <laughs> knows her name. That spare poor a woman. Thought. No. That poor woman. Her name has been in the press every day. Well, yeah. we, none of us know her. No. She didn't ask to be in the limelight. No. She, uh, at least we can do is pay notice to her report. Well, I mean, she will put flesh on the bones of this. But, you know, we do have to remember 126 fines were issued to you. That is actually quite a lot of fines. It's interesting. Yesterday, we were talking about, you know, whether or not people who shoplift in order to feed their family, um, you know, whether the police should go easy on them and look, you know, overlook it or whether a crime's a crime. And there was a kind of feeling, well, a crime's a crime. crime. Yeah. So it should be the same, isn't it? Yeah. A crime is a, is a crime and it should be regarded as such. Um, but we will spare a thought. For Sue Gray. That's all spare a thought. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, when you think a popular influencer as someone who looks like your nan, uh, may not be what first springs to mind, but the tech savvy elderly are actually part of a growing wave of hit content creators. There's Baddy Winkle there. Um, affectionately <laughs> known as Grandfluencers. It's a new study that's shown that TikTokers over the age of 60 are gaining huge popularity by breaking age stereotypes. You could be in that club, Carol. There yeah, you are, sitting I in your know. jammies. I am over 60. <laughs> I'm thinking, um, yeah, I, even I'm not that sort of out, out there. there. No, I'm not. I don't even, I've never looked on TikTok or done anything like that. But, the, but the, it's, I think it's quite a good thing because you do have like an image. People have an image of Old people. older people. Yeah. And that is starts at 60, mm, doesn't it? Actually, yeah. you're over 60 now. Uh, no, I'm not. You no, are. I'm not. I'm not. You I'm are. not. I'm not. Yeah, but I'm not now. <laughs> not that I'm bothered about it. I'm very relaxed about it. I demand a recount. <laughs> I demand, I a, demand recount. a recount. <laughs> well, I think it's. I think it's good to to break that stereotype of an old person. You know, you you know, you, you have your shampoo and set. You go to the hairdresser. You start wearing elasticated trousers. You and can't crops. wait for that bit. And uh, but I do. You are I, wearing elasticated I trousers. Am, no, <laughs> I'm not. They're too big for me. They do look like jammies, don't they? A bit. You're always saying um, you can't wait to give up on yourself. No, I do want to give up on myself, but <laughs> I can't because my husband's 22 years younger than me. So it's just not possible. I can't let go yet. You know, I can't. Where go is and the point that you are just going to go? Boof, let it go. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean, he'd have to leave me first, I suppose, <laughs> wouldn't he? I mean, that woman there's in her 80s. I mean, yeah. I have to say, I, I find, you know, those pictures really life-affirming. So cool. Because you're right, Carl, we do stereotype. Yeah. We talk about old people, don't we? Well, like our mums, so they got old, me. didn't they? Yeah. They well, see mine, just got me really careful not to stereotype yourself. It's your own yeah. inner ageism, isn't it, that would yeah. stop yeah. you doing what you want? Yeah. I hear myself saying, yeah. oh, is this mutton? Is this, well, what, what, what does yeah. that mean? Who's told you that? Yeah. And, you know, my parents, whenever they come round to my house, it, 
they always make me smile because they wear the most fabulous colours. Mm. There's nothing invisible about them. They don't even think about it. Yeah. They just wear what they want to wear. Yeah. Um, I think that, that stereotype you mentioned is about owning which one you want to be. Yeah. Because yeah. I think when the, when you're young, anything goes, and you're with the crowd, and you know, pre-career, you can do a lot of <clears> post-career. In retirement, I think you either end up becoming slightly more like, don't look at me, don't, I don't want my photos to have or you go, I've got nothing to lose. And I think that's what this lady's doing out there on her Grand Fluencing channel. She's basically got, she's uninhibited. She's like, look well, at me. If, you, if you're a wild child when you're younger and that's the way that you live your life, why would you change as you get older? Because that's that's the heart of you, isn't it? Mm, that's yeah. the way. Mm. But I mean, I suppose as we get older, it's going to be kind of different because we're used to this technical world, and I know you don't like it, Karen, you reject it. No. But, you know, so many people <laughs> are now it. comfortable with it. Um, but there's probably an older age group now who are not, and it's whether or not <clears throat> they could get a lot of benefit but from I, it. I, yeah. struck, I struggled with the first ever text message back in, I think it was something like 2002, when we didn't know what a text message was. I think it was a bit earlier than that. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the 90s. Well, yeah. 90, whatever, 90s. Mid 90s. You're not great so, now, are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm not brilliant. <laughs> Can give you a little pause. <laughs> and I had a brick, and I'd been on this date with someone I didn't want to see again. Did you have again. a pager as well? I didn't have a pager. <laughs> I, I loved my would... pager. Oh, bring back the pager. Anyway, this t uh, this brick phone had an envelope, a, a picture of an envelope and everything. What's that? And the, we only had arrows, didn't we? Up, down, like, yeah, yeah. and you would be like, I don't know what that That's is. That's when you and used yet, phones yet, and for phone then, calls. Yeah. Yeah. And yet then it would have seemed impossible to you that you would be able to be, you're still not greatly savvy, yeah. but I'm, as savvy but, yeah. as you are. Yeah, and yeah. now to think how far we've all come with the yeah. text message. I yeah. mean, really, none of us remember that first moment when no, you go, and, and, how do I you send know, a text? A lot of us keep in contact with each other through these things. And, you know, for older people who have loneliness you know then it could be a great way well, of them just keeping in touch with the world and not feeling so I, I really no, really think one of our big regrets Mark and I was with Nanny <laughs> Nanny Thelma who lived to her to, you know to 90 and for the last sort of five or six years of her life we kept saying because she was so smart and so engaged we kept saying let's get you on the internet let's and she oh no 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 and I really regret it because I think she would have flown with I think she would have been an amazing silver surfer and if I had my time my mum's incredibly tech savvy but I would really really encourage people that are scared and say oh I'm too old or I can't because it's a, I mean, you are literally opening up the world to people and the communication, the amount of, Nanny Thelma always wanted to know stuff and she would have just been locked into that internet. So I think it's really worth taking the time to help your elderly folk. That is a really inspirational connected. message, but I'm going to give the last word to Carol um. who says... It's no. a trap. It is a trap. <laughs> it's a it's trap. A trap. No, Technology well, traps you. And it, the, if you don't have it, it sets you free. Seriously. I'm going to start watching once in my life, I Mikhail. handed you the last word. You blew and cocked it up. My God. <laughs> <laughs> you were supposed to go, it's a trap. <laughs> oh, you already said it. I already said it. <laughs> Such a shame this is a live show. If it was yeah. too recorded, we'd have done you that again. Know it. <laughs> Still to come today, we're talking noisy neighbours and calming cuddles. And in just a moment, what can this... This <laughs> and these all help with. Uh, we're joined by the perimenopause doctor, Shazadi Harper, to Did reveal you all. Get your avocado, oh, Get your avocado out, love. Go on and have a go. Like I say, if this was pre recorded, um, <laughs> we'll also great. be catching up with actress Michelle Collins a little bit later. See, I'm going to have a word with this lot. We'll see you shortly. <laughs> the avocado. Welcome back to your Friday Loose Women. We're talking to perimenopause Dr. Dr. Shazadi Harper in just a second. But first, let's join Lisa for the competition. Where are you, Lisa? Hello, lovely ladies. Well, I have come to the Dalswood Farm, organic farm in the Cotswold. This is because our competition, our 80K in May, is about to close. You've got just over two hours and it's a lot of money. So we are celebrating our 80K in May competition, but we're also talking about World Bee Day. And I've got bee experts here. We've got Will and Ken. So uh, Will, talk to us about why bees are so special. So bees are really important because they're pollinators. So they fertilize all of the, well, not all of them, but a nice percent of the wildflowers that we see across the world and about a third of the food
food that we eat comes from bee pollination as well. So yeah. really important that we look after You're them. You're so passionate here. It's amazing. Beehives everywhere. So listen, £80,000 is a lot of money. Imagine if that was winging its way into your bank account, what would you spend it on? I mean, I've just, just bought a house with my wife, so we'd probably renovate that and turn it into a bit of a palace. Sensible, do, bit of yeah. a palace. What yeah. about you, Ken? Oh, I'd retire early. Would you retire Absolutely, early? Absolutely, yes. It's a no-brainer, but that's what they would do. What would you do with £80,000? You have to be quick because the lines are closing in a matter of hours. This money could be hitting your bank account in 10 days' time. What are you waiting for? Here's all the details. Go on, enter it. Come on. For another chance to win, text CASH to 86060. Text costs £2 plus one standard network rate message. Go to the website, entries cost £2. Call 09068 786060. Calls cost £2 plus your network access charge or post your name and phone number to DY18 PO Box 7558 Derby DE10NQ. Entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close today at 3 p.m. Entrance must be contactable on the 27th and the 30th of May. Good luck. Now, as part of our menopause manifesto, we are committed to talking about all areas of your menopause, from anxiety to hot flushes. It's something that 13 million women in the UK are facing every day. But there are some everyday things that can help you, especially if you start young. So here to tell us more, we're delighted to be joined by the perimenopause doctor, Dr. Shazadi Harper. Mm -hmm. Hi, Shazadi. Hi. Lovely to see you. Hello. Um, Carol is very puzzled as to why sunglasses are going to help anyone get through the menopause. Well, I mean, I think, you know, some do, people ask me all the time about supplements and things. And I think, you know, if I was to give one piece of advice, which supplement, one supplement, it would be vitamin D. Mm. Yeah. So that's why, you know, vitamin oh, D helps. Right. So you need you to know, be in the sun yeah, more than anything. Be, yeah. yeah. Go on lots yeah. more holidays. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I, I get that. I, I live in the sun. <laughs> yeah. <That's> great <laughs> advice. <laughs> so that, that would be my top tip supplement um really helps isn't it more like a hormone vitamin d yeah. they say isn't it yeah. than a vitamin yeah. it's so brilliant for immune system mm. and everything isn't it yeah. well it's good for more than and more than you think and i think especially perimenopause or menopausal women not only is it for your aches and pains but it also helps with weight management because it helps with sort of helping mm. insulin secretion from the pancreas so you know oh. one of the things that we all struggle with um maybe not all but most women struggle with a lot around that time is that sort of midlife mm. waste game yeah, yeah, isn't spread. it funny? We grew up with vitamin C being the one that everyone yeah. really... Yeah. Vitamin D was almost like the poor relative. It didn't really get a look in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and I've had a friend mention vitamin D to me for years and she was, won't stop banging on about it. And of course, now she's so right because everybody... How annoying. I know. <laughs> <laughs> How annoying. But so it is helpful. At what age and stage do you think that we should start thinking about, well, menopause, but I guess our... our Dare I say hormone journey, and I apologise for that. But, I mean, maybe it's time we started joining the doors. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's one of the reasons why I do what I do, because I wanted to be that doctor to help women to join those dots up. And I think, you know, we should be learning about it at school, you know, as women or young girls, you know, learning about puberty, you know, then periods, um, pregnancy, um, you know, perimenopause, menopause post-menopause. So we should really know from the beginning, in a sense, so that we're prepared. You know, it, it is quite debilitating time for some women, um, not all. But the thing is, I think when you've got that information to hand, you know, you then don't think that you're going crazy mm. and you can be in control. But yeah. the, the, this is your specialist subject, right? Yes. And you didn't even recognise it yourself? Yeah, well, one of the things is when you're growing up, this is what I mean, when yeah. you're growing up, you think it's hot flushes, moody women, and it's somebody much older. So when you look in the mirror, you think it can't possibly be me. And life throws so many things to, at you in your 40s. You know, I'd started a new partnership in a GP practice. Mm. I'd got preg um, not pregnant, sorry. <laughs> I got, <I'd> got <laughs> married, didn't last very long, but still I got married in that time. So there were lots of stresses going on. My father had died as well. So, mm. you know, you don't know if it's grief or, you know, mm. that you're feeling tired or you're feeling sad. Um, and for me, you know, I had things like um, joint aches and pains. And, you know, if you ask me what my superpower is, it's memory. Um, and when I started to think, I'm having to double check, triple check my work, you know, when I'm in GP practice. And I was so tired. In between patients, I was lying on my couch. Mm. Um, and so 
So yes, you and know. We hear that time, time again from women, don't we? Go through because we all, we all mm. did. You know, yeah. well, one minute I thought I had cancer, next minute Alzheimer's, and no, at no point did I think, oh, this is my hormones. Mm. You know, yeah. These vital hormones, and it's that so we need. gradual yeah. that you go from normal to abnormal very gradually. So you, yeah. you can't pin it on a date or a month yeah. specifically. And your advice has helped me so much. And again, you mentioned something to me which was about being Asian and about there's some differences in different ethnicities about which hormones kick in when and I mean you absolutely I mean I think we don't even talk about how it can affect women differently like younger women um you know sort of one percent of women do go through their menopause under the age of 40 but you know brown women we go through it a bit younger you know in, in India the average age is 47 for menopause mm. whereas UK it's 51 if you've not had children you go through it a little bit earlier you know if you're a smoker so I think you know we don't talk about the variations you know even coming back to vitamin D no one tells you that actually people of color need to take more vitamin D rather than no. you know um, and and you know because it's sort of almost like a one-track shop you know sort of um, in in even as even as a doctor so and alzheimer's was a big thing for me you know my mother um has dementia which i'm sure was accelerated around time menopause so when i felt my memory was going i thought am i getting early alzheimer's am i i was so scared and that's why i thought you know i've got five younger sisters if i don't do something about it now as in sort of find out more about it and become yeah. that expert mm. then who else is going to do and it you're a doctor and this is the thing 40 percent of medical schools don't teach anything about no about the well, menopause. it's not compulsory is it's it? not yeah. compulsory i mean you're talking about doing it in schools which is so yeah. important obviously but we also need doctors to be better informed yeah. so they can help but if you're talking about us being more aware what can we do then as women yeah, I, I think as women, not to just leave it to the last minute, you know, sort of thinking about your health from a big, you know, from, from the, the outset. You're looking after yourself, you know, the things that you, you've heard your doctor say to you about sort of eating well, you know, mm. Mediterranean diet, you yeah. know, doing exercise, exercise and particularly strength training. Don't um, smoke. Don't smoke. You don't know, drink, drink too much. Yeah, don't drink too much. <laughs> you know, those, those things that maybe that you kind of pu push to the back burner really need to come to the front. And they really will make a difference, do you think? Oh, they make a huge difference and they make the journey a bit more manageable. You know, you cope better. Common symptoms that you hear in perimenopause are things like, I feel overwhelmed or I'm finding it hard to cope. You know, um, I don't seem to be able to concentrate. Um, you know, they're suffering at work. So, you know, taking those, making those sort of decisions earlier in your 20s, 30s, yeah. um, you know, makes a big difference when you get into your 40s and 50s um, and beyond. Yeah. Shazadi, thank you so much. Yeah, thank uh, you. Dr. Shazadi Harper. Mm. Uh, we are chatting, comforting cuddles a bit later. Find out why the panel is split in two today when it comes to becoming, to being a natural hugger. And Michelle Collins is with us too, right after this. Welcome back to your Friday Loose Women. <laughs> Alongside me, Kay Adams, it's Sinetra Sarkar, Carol McGiffin and Nadia Sawala. Uh, coming up as a new study has revealed that whilst a hug can help relieve stress for women, it does nothing for men, apparently. Uh, but do you love them or loathe them? And after one cockerel in Worcester has driven its neighbours bonkers by waking them up every day at four o'clock in the morning, uh, we're revealing our own noisy neighbour horror stories. Uh, now, it is one of the world's most famous whodunits, no, not who shot Phil Mitchell. It's Cluedo, of course, and we've got our own mystery on our hands today. So, which former EastEnders star went from hiring a hitman to bump off Ian Beale to starring in a theatre production inspired by one of the most beloved bo board games of all, Case Closed? It's actress Michelle Collins. Oh, you've well, got I wear red every night doing uh, Cluedo playing Miss Scarlet, so oh, I thought I'd go to the extreme. You better you've watch the Carol Dutton. Doesn't... haven't you? Yeah. Well, well, I kind of think I have. And yeah. when I was a, a kid and we used to play it, it was only my sister and I, so we used to play it with my cousins. And we all wanted to be Miss Scarlet. Yeah, Even the boys wanted did, to be yeah. Miss Scarlet. Yeah. It's kind of a fun, and it is a very fun role. Even though it's a kind of very much an ensemble piece, 
Um, so it's based on the legendary board game. Yeah. yeah which and, I love. Um, and you don't have to know anything about Cluedo to actually appreciate the play. It has a beginning and a middle and an end. Right. And it's not immersive. So it has the old the characters, you know, Mrs. White, Colonel Mustard, um, oh, Reverend Peacock, Green. Reverend Green. We have Professor, a Reverend Green, Professor Plum. Plum. Yeah. Very Plum. good. Yeah. And um, really talented. Um, Young cast, I should say, <laughs> mostly young, <laughs> a lot younger than me. And um, 21 yeah, Doors, it's, it's, is that right? 21 Doors. So it's, is, this, is this proper slapstick, like the old noises oh. off? And... Yeah, I mean, if you said that to the director, he would bite your head off. Oh, but, but okay. So it's very stylized. I mean, we had a movement coach coming in and it's very physical. And we've all had a lot of injuries. I mean, I carry a candle, quite a heavy candlestick around every night. So I've had... Oh, 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 there you go. Is it, is it, <laughs> every night sorry <laughs> and so um, i've had a, 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 few, a shoulder injury actually for quite a long time oh, yeah. but uh, but yeah it's very physical um i don't get thrown thrown around too much but there are kind of six murders through the night uh and we have the candlestick the rope the revolver the spanner the, the lead, lead pipe, pipe. Yes. oh my god oh, you must have spent your entire time doing it and do you know what it's <laughs> and the rope yes I the rope. Love um, it, but I think when you do a new play, you're always very worried how it's going to come, how, if people are going to like it. But you know what? There have been challenges. We've come out of COVID, everything else. We're doing a new play, but people are loving it. Mm. We get, we are getting fantastic audiences, which is really brilliant because mm. obviously yeah. what's been going on. And it's the kind of play that we've had like seven, eight year olds and 80 year olds all loving well, it. Well, that's the great thing about slapstick. I don't think yes. there's enough slapstick out there. And you know what? It's kind laughing. of old fashioned -ish kind yeah. of humour, which I think yeah. we kind of miss. Yeah, there's an innocence and, about it. Exactly. Everyone's allowed That's, to laugh yeah. at it. And yeah. it's just such a joy being back in the theatre as a performer, but also seeing audiences really enjoying it yeah. and just loving it. And it, and it's quite short as well. And it's all it over same? by 9.30, which is great. Great, because eight performances uh, yeah. a week yes. yeah. is so tough. Oh, oh, 9.30, you can go at club in there. No, you're joking, I go to bed. No, no come on, no, no. I leave that <laughs> to the younger one. No, I, I am. You're quite to Carol, for God's sake. You're talking about what you were talking about before you know with the menopause and everything else and I definitely feel that I am more exhausted now and I have to conserve yeah, my energy and then I'm a little natural in the day you yeah, know, that's yeah. that thing. but but yeah, <laughs> yes but it's kept me really fit yeah. it has kept me really fit and yeah I'm enjoying it. it's a long tour I mean it's a six-month tour we've been doing it for four months wow. we're in Southampton we go to Manchester, the Lowry, Brighton, Milton Keynes. We finished kind of mid-July in Truro in Cornwall. Oh, mm. wonderful. So, and, yeah. and you also get married this summer, so you'll be super fit for your wedding. Uh, yeah, I'm exercising like crazy. <laughs> I've got my step box in my dressing room with my with the candlestick, <laughs> you know, doing those. <laughs> good prop. But you haven't got your dress prop. yet. No, I haven't got my dress yet. No. no. I'm but thinking this, that could I, be the I, outfit. I, 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 there's, a, there's a great clip of... Um, of um, Liam, uh, no, Chris, Chris Hemsworth uh -huh. and his wife rocking these white trouser suits. Mm, yeah. And I said to my, my partner, and he was like, yeah, but Michelle, that's in Australia by a swimming pool. We're going to be in Islington. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so wearing it, is it going to work? But do you know what? It's kind of, I kind of didn't really expect it to happen. And I'm, because I'm not that kind of, you know, it wasn't on my agenda really ever to get married. My sister got married very long young. time. We've been you? together ten years. Yeah. yeah. And um, so you know what? I'm kind of organising everything, and the it will happen. I'll I'll find it. So what know. made you think then we want to get married after ten years? Uh, well, he did ask me. I didn't ask him. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, I think you know what because. Because of everything that's happened, the pandemic, you know, we survived the pandemic mm, together. Yeah. We actually, it actually yeah. brought us closer together. That's a deal. And I think if you can survive that as a couple, I had a lot of my mum died, uh, my best friend died. It's been a really challenging time. And I just think, you know, he kind of said, look, I think we should just do it. Why, why wait? We've been together 10 years. Mm. You don't know what's around the corner. And I kind of, you have to live life from day to day so now. Many people because people feel like that. Yeah, yeah the pandemic, absolutely. Don't they? And you know what? And, and to see all my friends, my friends coming from Australia, I haven't seen since mm. my 50th, actually. I've mm. got a friend coming from France, from Italy. So 
I think my friends are more happier than I am. Yeah, for me. yeah, yeah. yeah it's like, oh, yeah. a bit of good news, you know. And you were talking there about the people that you've lost. I was like, June, June, Brown. I know. Did we just? I think we just all thought she would live forever. Well, she did almost, didn't she? She was in her nineties. <laughs> I know. I mean, she was incredible. She was the first. She was actually. She was very healthy. She, she was. ate very healthy. I know she, she smoked did. and she loved her red wine, but she was very healthy. She you was the one she that always took vitamin C off. Oh, she, she had, had a whole pack. box of all these no, vitamins. No, yeah, I promise you. I promise you. She st I saw her once doing her ex her perfect floors on the trolley in the BBC canteen. <laughs> I tell you. And she was the one that introduced me to the hay diet. Yes. You don't mix Me your too. proteins and your starches. Yeah. And I she was, was like, ahead of her time. She, she really was, was yeah. I tell you. And she was a very fit woman, hence why she she lived for so long. And she yeah. she was a fantastic woman. She was such fun. Yeah. She really was. And I, I just think it's so sad that we don't have those, those you know, um, June's gone, Barbara's gone, mm -hmm. Wendy Richards has mm -hmm. gone. And I don't think EastEnders has those, you know, those older characters anymore. It's kind of it. Corey does a little yeah, bit, they doesn't don't it? Don't necessarily but bring in the new ones. I suppose they're just waiting they for the ones that them, they're to they? grow older. Yeah, but yeah. then yeah, they grow but... into becoming icons. Like you're, but you're still all... recognised as an iconic character. Oh, God, tell me about it. I mean, it's bizarre. Do you, do you I mean, still get challenged then? All the time. Yeah, I bet you. I mean, do. I've you given up going. I've given up kind of going. No, no, I wasn't an EastEnders. I'm a serious actress now. You know, I've given up. What's the point? Go with it. And I think. Because, because they're I, running old episodes now, I think. Yeah, aren't and they I somewhere? don't know how these young kids know who I am, but they do. Really? Well, I do know it's because of stream. It's because of, of course, the Jack yeah. Gold yeah. and all those I'm on kind of things. They're redoing my and, ones. It's so and you weird. kind of just go, you know yeah. what? Embrace it. I've been in the yeah. industry since I was 18 years old, and I'm still working and I'm surviving. And a lot of women my age have left the industry because Absolutely. they couldn't make it either financially viable mm. or they've kind yes. of drifted off in different directions. And I'm kind of still going. So it's a landmark I, moment in yes, your career. And I want to, and I'm decided I'm going to be more positive about it. I don't. Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. Why not embrace? Yeah. Well, listen, Michelle. Um, it's lovely to see you. I mean, Miss Scarlet dressed in white, but you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, all the very best for the wedding, of course. And Cluedo is on um, up and down the country. So yes, look out we're in Southampton this week and we are Sheffield next week, uh, Brighton, Manchester, the Lowry, all over the place. Go and have a look where we right. are. Yes. Fantastic. In just a moment, are you an awkward hugger or a casual cuddler? And can you guess which of us had to teach ourselves to become natural huggers? Also today, we're chatting noisy and nosy neighbours. Back in a bit. here in Hollywood, home to the rich and famous, the weird and the wonderful, a place where anything goes. I'm going to interview <laughs> my own husband here in Los Angeles. Hello, darling. Hi, darling. <laughs> Welcome to La La Land with me, Denise Welsh, mm. only on Loose Women. Welcome back. Still to come today from Barking Dogs to a bit of How's Your Father. Uh, we're chatting noisy neighbours. Plus, there's nothing more comforting than a good hug. But do they help you relax or does a cuddle make you cringe? First, though, competition time and there is a massive £80,000 up for grabs. Lisa is live in the Cotswolds. How are you getting on, Lisa? Hey, ladies. Well, I've got some big news. Our 80K in May competition is about to close in a matter of hours, under two to be precise. So you've got to be quick if you want to be in with a chance of winning £80,000. Now, I've come to the Dalesford Organic Farm in the Cotswolds, and we are celebrating our 80K in May, but we're also celebrating World Bee Day. And I wanted to try some of the delicious honey that's produced here at the farm. So, Jason, you're an expert in bees. You've also worked at the cookery school, so you're the perfect person to talk me through what we have here. Yes, so we've got some local Cotswold honey, absolutely delicious. Um, uh, the bees forage that in hedgerow, so it's got nice floral flavours to it. Yummy. Um, and then here we've got some fantastic acacia honey with some truffle in there. Fantastic for dinner parties right at the end, enjoying with some beautiful cheese. Ooh, hot stuff. Yes, exactly. And then we've got some British summer chunk honey. Um, this is absolutely delicious, something you should spread on toast. I it's would all say. cloudy. Yes, uh, that's a good sign. That means it is pure 100% honey. It's crystallised slightly, and that means that uh, it gets yeah, good, good honey. <gasps> can I try some of the posh dinner party stuff? You certainly can. This yeah. looks amazing. Absolutely. Okay, you'll need a little bit. A little bit goes a long way. 
Mmm, delicious, absolutely delicious. Sweet and yummy, but not as sweet and yummy as if you were to win £80,000. So what are you waiting for? It could be in your bank account in 10 days' time. Here's all the details you need. Good luck. For another chance to win, text CASH to 86060. Text costs £2 plus one standard network rate message. Go to the website, entries cost £2. Call 09068 786060. Calls cost £2 plus your network access charge. Or post your name and phone number to DY18 PO Box 7558 Derby DE10NQ. Entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close today at 3 p.m. Entrance must be contactable on the 27th and the 30th of May. Good luck. Thanks, Lisa. No, there is nothing more comforting than a warm embrace from a loved one after a stressful day. Or is there? A new study has shown that a cuddle, even a very short one, can help the body's natural response to stressful situations. But only if you're a woman. Mm -hmm. Research has shown that no visible stress-reducing effects were seen in men. Isn't that fascinating? No, I, I, I don't know about that. Oxytocin is released like it is in women. I get that. You know, I think I get that because as a general rule of thumb, I think men give hugs and women receive hugs on a on a sort of primitive level. Right. And so I think men are looking to care by mm -hmm. giving a hug. They're not expecting to receive anything back and women need the hug and want to receive. And then when two women hug, I think there's more of an exchange. Oh, I agree. They wow. feel yeah. an exchange. And I So would you think that I is men thinking that. that it's that they've got to be the strong one. So they, you know, they sort the situation with a hug. But the chemical isn't released. So it's yeah. actually physiological. They don't get their good feel good oxytocin. That's what I, I think mean, that is, fascinates yeah, me. That's, that they makes tested sense, their though. blood. I yeah, you're not even analysing this. You think so, Carol? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's not social conditioning. It's physiology. Carol's it's biology. biology. Down to earth. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly do. I hug to hug, and it. You have a hug or you don't. No, some people are huggers. Some people are not. Research is saying that women respond better than men. <laughs> what, what we're saying is men don't feel what women feel when they hug. Yes, they do. <laughs> Because German researchers from the yes, Royal University yes. of Bochum in Germany <laughs> tell us. No, hang on a minute. I love Sinetra just showed how new she is still because she went, but it's a scientific <laughs> to Carol. <laughs> but you had to question the science. Somebody's you done have an to. experiment for you. No, somebody's I life's really work. Really somebody's life's work is to work <laughs> out are men feeling what women feel during home? And Carol Gibb comes in and goes, No, it's not true. <laughs> But I think but you're they right. do. I they love hugs as much as we do. Well, some of them, we don't. No, you might have thought that. No, they it might do. have suited you, but it's now been proven that they're not. That they are givers and not receivers. And actually, when I think about it, Mark always very much like he'll even put my arms down like this. He puts my arms down. I think, oh, here we go. I'm having a hug. And he puts his arm, and it's very much, I'm giving you a hug. Yeah, that doesn't sound very really stress relieving. <laughs> but I like, if I'm upset, actually, if I'm really, if I was crying, a hug isn't always the thing that I want. And I think men just automatically want to hug. Right. Because they want to protect it. They want to stop it. Mm. And Because it makes you feel better. No, but it doesn't mean, like, if I'm crying, I, I all, if somebody hugs me, I feel like I've got to stop crying then because, like... So when do you like a hug? Because you're oh, always I don't hugging. know. I'm very random. But do, random random. In your do you not find mm. that? You know those hugs where people just keep you in a hug because it's more than a <gasps> hug? bad for that. I'm but not with you, I'm exactly. Not. You'll find She's a lingerer. I bet you've all felt it's more women that have done <laughs> that. Can you think of any man that's hugged you and then gone, no, I'm not letting you go. No, I'm not. I need longer. Yeah, it's... yeah. My husband does that all the time. <laughs> but that's your oh, husband. That's, that's, yeah. I'm talking about all general time. huggers, not what you, I go, right, like, physical all right, lovers. That's enough. That's enough. I've got stuff to do. <laughs> I have to literally tear myself away from him. Seriously. Maybe that's because you think yeah. it's going to lead to a I bit tell of you, No, we're always hugging. We hug a lot. I saw Janet the other day. Yeah. She gave me a hug. <gasps> no. oh, she, gave, she gave me a hug. She, she must have lasted really about missed four you. seconds. Well, no, it wasn't a long hug. I didn't say it was a long hug, but she gave me a hug. But, you know, yeah. some people loved the pandemic because it meant they didn't have to hug. Some people don't like that feeling. Like, as an actor, me and Nadia, we, we know, we're all about when touchy When I first feely. came into presenting and factual from drama, I thought there was something wrong with all of you. Well, we thought there was something wrong with you. <laughs> Yeah. Me and Jane have had this is. conversation. <laughs> no, fact, because in a drama, you do. You're more, much more physical. I suppose because you have to get intense with people quite quickly, so you would know. be more, you know, know. touchy with but them. But Jane and I were just saying that we both independently noticed this thing, is that, you know, something happens, so Nadia will 
you put her hand on your hand, which is nice. But then you expect her to go like that, but she doesn't. And so 10 minutes later, her Never. hand is still on your hand. Never. And you think, you, you were talking when are you going to let go of hand? <laughs> so you've been, yeah, but I've only ever, ever touched you for 40 you seconds well maximum. <laughs> Wouldn't you rather she like you and put a hand on you than never want to touch you and have her arms yeah, crossed all the time? Yeah, but she lingers a bit too long. <laughs> oh, charming. OK. Um, so, let's move on. <laughs> One pet cockerel. Do you get pet cockerel? Thank you. Causing carnage for its neighbours. Not sitting on that cockerel again, are you, so this is uh, now. Contain yourselves, <laughs> girls. Awful. We're nearly at the end of the week. Please, like please. Me. Um, so this is in Worcester. These people have got a cockerel, and the neighbours are going absolutely bonkers because it wakes them up at four o'clock in the morning. They're absolutely exhausted. Some of them have even had to take time off work. One of them has actually been called Old MacDonald by his colleagues. Um, so, have you ever had problems not with a cockerel but a noisy neighbour? Yeah, I had to move out of a flat. I had to sell a flat and and move. Because of the noise. Well, where was that coming it from? Was, it was coming from kids. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody kids. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> well, just like going just about being a normal alive. business. Just kids well, being alive. Yeah, yeah, screaming, playing, Breathing. You know, being annoyed, being joyful, <laughs> running, no, laughing. Because when I bought the flat, it was full of kind of, you know, young professionals. It was like a yuppie sort of building. And then they all grew up and had kids and all these noises were coming from the courtyard. <laughs> oh, my God. I really seriously sold the flat because of it. You left because of children. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah but to enough. qualify that, there are some holidays where it's adults only because they do know yeah. that there is an extra stimulus that comes from children playing. <laughs> I'm on your side yeah. a little bit for that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and my problem with noisy neighbours has been the stage before the children. It's the stage when they're trying to make the children. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, jealousy will get you everywhere. Well, I mean, it was like that. I remember I was, I was in a flat once and I was actually sharing with my boyfriend, but my goodness, the people on, like, the other side of the wall. Put you to shame. Woof. They, they did. You started to feel inadequate. I mean, that headboard, every night I thought it was going to come through. And then so we're sitting there, you know, with a cup of tea you know, look at each book. other, and they're like going at it, hammer and tones you next door. Do you do you think, should we? Oh, Maybe should we? Oh, oh, but then the then. terrible it's thing like is, one leg out my pajamas. you're never going to keep up with them. <laughs> it's like a competition. It was a terrible eight. experience. No, that's, that's not nice. I mean, mine is a different one, so it's not the it's kids. It's not a competition, though, is it? <laughs> it's 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 a feels like it is a competition. Their <laughs> headboard's going faster than our headboard. It was terrible. Oh, no, that's not nice. It was horrible. Did you call them? Mine is a later point in life, so you're is the making the children, yours is the children, mine's like the widowed single lady living next to How door. was she making a noise? Back years ago. <laughs> no. Okay. She was learning to play the piano. Oh, and learning. it was about five, uh, it was before I had kids, and she was like literally going, da na na <laughs> ba bo. And I was like, my headboard is must be against the piano. I must hear the uh, reverb. I'm hearing more than anyone in the ho uh, house is hearing. I can't see anything about that. What, what did you, you do? Did you move? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did you sell it's you on me, kid? I, yeah, yeah. I was quick to leave. Yeah. Well, thank God it wasn't the violin. <laughs> well, but, well, you are well, the noisy well, neighbour, aren't you? Are yeah. no well, <laughs> I really hope my dad isn't watching. Because my dad lives next door to me, and because I'm his neighbour, he didn't think he would ask me before he built an extra room with glass window all the way round, so he could see directly into my garden and directly into my house. <laughs> Which is fine for now, because it's family, but if he were ever to sell, who am I going to have looking directly into my garden yeah. and my sitting room? No, well, I hope you're not making babies in the garden. <laughs> Well, you don't want your dad watching you do that, do you? <laughs> do you think anyone oh. ever moved house because of you? Oh, oh sure, good yeah. Question. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Right, you've got fifteen seconds. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I can't because it takes me <laughs> take too long. Say <laughs> I did say get a letter that. from a neighbour once when I was living um, in Chelsea in London, and they did send me a letter saying we can't put up with your noise anymore, <gasps> and they moved out. Oh, did anything to do with your headboard? No, actually, <laughs> yeah, it was my going... alarm clock. Oh, how boring! <laughs> That's it for it. today. Next week, things are heating in the studio. Better check your temperature, ladies. Uh, Sean Paul's going to be no joining way. us on Monday, yep, as well as Peter Andre and Oti Mabusi later in the week as well. So you have a fabulous weekend. Mm -hmm.